Okay, here I am outside. First flower is resting on my board here, taking the pin out. I'm going to um, stick my skewer into the center and just straighten out that one petal. Now it's windy out here, so I might lose a few bits and pieces here. I don't know why I'm being so fussy, but I am. Okay, holding my flower in place. There's going to be shadows. I'm sorry. This is how it has to be. I'm in the sunshine. And I'm just, you can see that I'm going from the top here a little bit. And I'm going from the sides. Now it doesn't look like much at first. My glue gun or my uh, heat gun is just starting to heat up. But the petals are starting to melt a bit. So I'm going more from the underside. You can see, I hope you can see the tools melting a little bit. Flowers are scrunching up. The color also gets a little bit more intense. I hope you can hear me talking here. Now these smaller petals are gonna take their hit and miss as to how they turn out. I'm gonna just turn this around a bit. And work from this side. Yeah, now my my gun is getting hotter and hotter. Okay, so this one is good enough in my mind. Now being careful not to touch the bottom of that but you can see how the flower has scrunched up in the center. I could do more on here, but it's starting to turn a little bit yellow there, so I'm gonna pass on that for now. Oh, my leaves are going flying. Why is it every time I wanna do things outside here, it's always windier than, than I need it to be? Okay, I'm gonna try putting it this way to see if that helps. Lost a couple of leaves, but that's okay. All right, so just to do the leaf, Now my whole tray is going to go flying. So you can see how the leaf is scrunching up. And there is the leaf. It's taken on kind of these bubbles on the other side. And a little bit of melting going on here. I wouldn't mind melting a little bit more of this leaf here, but um, I'm gonna just hold that down again and see if we can get that part to melt. There's no uh, guarantees when you're doing this. <laughs> so there is my leaf melted. So it certainly doesn't look the same as it did before. Let's do this big red one, taking the pin out.
I hope you're getting the idea of how this is melting. So you can see how the petals are starting to crunch up a little bit. And they're starting to adhere to each other a little bit. I'm just pulling this apart. And you can, you know, it depends on how much you like it. You can scrunch this up really tight. Um, but I do like them to be more flat. And um, here, I'm gonna start this again. Now in this one, I've uh, burnt it a little bit here, um, but that's okay. It's It kind of adds to the shabbiness here. I will continue to work on this and um, melt these parts of the flowers a little bit more. But I'm gonna do that off camera because I just wanna do a couple to show you and then I will do these all and, and uh, show you the finished results. So let's take this blue one. Now this one has four layers. Can you hear the birds? It's just crazy. Ever since yesterday, it seems like the eclipse kind of woke them up or something. We only had a partial eclipse here, but kind of woke them up and it's just crazy. I hope you get to hear that. Oh, this one's going to turn out so cute. I'm really letting this one melt more than the other ones. So this one, the leaves have melted a lot more, but they're very hard, so that's kind of cool. And it is loose. I think I could probably pull these apart. But when you look at how it looks now compared to how nasty it was before, um, they're, they're pretty cute. And once you start seeing them with centers in them and leaves, they look pretty awesome. So I'm going to put that one aside. Let's do um, this big orange one. Now this one has the glue in here. And the tool. It's like a jungle out here. So first I'm going to go in the center.
Now this one has the glue on it, but we, like I said, we'll uh, cover that up afterwards. Okay, so now you can see where the glue is on here, I think. And the glue has melted in the center, so this is probably going to be held together pretty good. But what a difference already how it looks, right? I'm going to do one more, and then the rest I'm going to do offline. So I'm taking the pin out. Now this one doesn't have any tool in it. I'm just gonna kind of hold that side down and do more one side than the other. And this one I'm gonna do a little bit more intense uh, heating. Okay, the wind is changing and it's getting cold, so I'm probably not going to get a chance to finish all of these for you. So now this is where I'm putting a little bit more extra heat. It's burning it a little bit, but I'm putting more heat on the individual petals. I'm going to put my tray inside because it's getting too windy. Okay, I'm going to finish up this flower online here and then the rest I will do a few offline, but I might have to call it a day. <laughs> Okay, now my tray is knocked over. All right, I'm going to pause the camera for now. I'll be right back. Hi, everyone. One more time I'm trying here. I took everything inside, and I've been doing the flowers individually now. But I wanted to show you this one because this uh, fabric is uh, a little bit more silky feeling, like more li like a lining, and it really scrunches up super nice. So I just wanted you to see how this worked. So again, I'm just going a little bit from the top. It melts a lot easier and faster. Oop, it looks like I left a pin in there. Oh, maybe I have two flowers. I have two flowers here. <laughs> That's the problem. Okay, I had I had put them. I was going to show you the flowers before and after, but um, I just 
it's working out now, so I just thought I'll just do them right in front of you. So going a little bit from the top, going on each petal, they seem to melt really easy. And I don't even care if the flowers become off center. I'm just gonna move that one over. Because they really get shabby, this, this, uh, but you do have to watch that you don't burn it. I burnt one. And then going from the outside. Okay, so I know it looks like just a bunch of melted plastic right now. Oop, there's my other flower. So, oop. There goes the wind again. Okay, so I'm going to put this one on here. Now you can do individual layers if you want. And you can also, I hope I'm not bumping the camera too much. You can also do it from the back side, but I find that then the leaves start to curl up this way. So you do have to be a little bit careful. Um, but I'm going to do this one now. Wouldn't you know, every big truck has to go by at once, right? The wind had actually died down for a few minutes while I was doing these. But, you know, we're on camera now. Now this one I had used the larger rose petals and on that small one I used the smaller petals to make two flowers but now I'm thinking that I can just take this one now and add it into there and isn't that beautiful as the two together so that will make one flower. I'm getting so excited to show you the end results but I see I have this leaf here so I'm going to do this one separate just to show you some different options. knowing that I'm going to still have to either stitch or glue that onto that one. But the two flowers together are going to be beautiful to make one big shabby flower. So I'm going to stop now, finish up everything, and I'll meet you inside. Okay, and I'm back. Well, that was a windy experience, wasn't it? <laughs> okay, so first of all, I'm going to take these leaves. I didn't do all the leaves, so I'm just going to put these leaves aside. I will do them in my next batch for sure. Get that out of the way. And these are some of the leaves that I did do. Um, it's just a little bit of a scrunchy look. There's a few of them here. Oh, I also have a needle and thread on here. Don't want to get that mixed up. Um, and the leaves, when I do the leaves separately like this, I like to let them, um, I just put them in a bag or a container until I'm ready to use them. So here's one of the flowers. Now the, the uh, back layers are a little bit loose. So rather than hot glue everything into place, I'm just going to take my, my needle and thread. And I'm just going to tack it a couple of times. Ouch. Yeah, don't do that. Because uh, by the time I'm finished, you won't see it anyway. Did it again. I'm just... I'm uh, torturing myself here. And so just... Uh, 
this is how I'll, I will store them if I don't use them right away. And it's just to uh, keep it all together until I decide what I want to use it for. Now I won't I won't put you through me doing all of them. I'm just doing this one to show you how I do it, and then the rest I will do off camera. And sometimes I glue them. You know I'll glue the sections together, uh, but this is just enough to tack it until I decide what I want to do. And nobody sees the backside anyway. And then this is not going to go flying around. So there was that one. So there's the leaves that I did, and a few more. And there's one that's not done. So they get really crunchy and uh, bubbly. So here's a couple of the blue ones. Again, not uh, put together, but there's the blue. There's some pins. Now this was one of the little silk flowers. I didn't do this one just to show you the different effects. Now here is where I have two layers and it's melted a little bit more. And then this one I melted with a leaf. And the reason I do them with leaves sometimes is because then they will shape around the flower. When you do them separately, you risk that they're going to curl up too much that the flower doesn't sit in there nicely. But these ones I did pretty flat, so I, I think I can get away with, yeah, I can get away with using them like that as well. But I don't necessarily want that many leaves around a single flower like that, so I, that's why I didn't do them all as well. So so then there was this one where I, I didn't do it as much, but I did fill in the center a lot more. So this is really hard and uh, not going anywhere. And the nice thing about this is when you do these flowers, they keep their shape. They're, they're, not, they're not going to uh, wrinkle up uh, any further than, than really than what they are. And they're reasonably flat to go on your journals or in your journals. I want to mix that thread up there stick it up there and then there's more blue ones this one is got the, the three layers as well I think this one has three layers and then there's this one this was a cute one this one was a flower that just had three layers so I couldn't even use it on anything else I don't think I think I used it on anything else another leaf now these ones, now this one I didn't um, melt as much and it's very loose so I will have to pin this one together before, or uh, stitch it together before I use it or before I store it. Uh, and these two I scrunched up quite a bit. Love how these turned out. But we're not done yet. And then I have more of these little ones. This one really got melted. And same with these. Now, you can sometimes pull the petals back so you can get to the center of the flower. You know, but it, it's, um, sometimes it's nice just to have a scrunchy piece that you don't really, can't really tell that it's a flower. I'll explain that <laughs> in a minute. And then these ones I did a little bit less. And some more, more leaves that are done. And one more leaf that isn't done. So, that's the first box. Oh, and there's more pins in here. And then this one turned out really cute because I went back and wrinkled it up more in the center. I think I showed you this one uh, when I was working on it. And these were the two separate ones that I said now I'm going to probably put them together to make one. Or, you know, they, they may look nice staggered like this on a project. We'll, we'll play around and see. Another uh, red one, and now this is where the tool is is larger. And on here, I you can't really see it, but I did burn it a little bit. Maybe you can see it if I just hold this here. You can see a couple of little burn marks right there. But this is where you can always uh, trim the tool down a little bit so that it's more in line with the flower. Because once the flower melts, uh, it the tool melts too, but the flower seems to melt a little bit more. So you can line it up just a little bit better so it's not sticking out so much. So hopefully you can see that okay. And there's the pink one. Now this one I had a different flower, the rose uh, uh, 
petals that I used in the center. There is some glue here, and I will show you how you can disguise that. And that's because when they put the flowers together, sometimes they hot glue them in between. But it's still a very pretty flower. And you can overlap these with other flowers, too. Um, this might be a little bit too... Um, too much contrast there with the green leaf, but, but you can overlap them with other flowers and, and other things. But there are other ways to fix this. Another little pink one. This one is like half done because I used only the larger leaves or larger petals. Um, so it didn't tighten up as much. But this is one of those cases where you could put something like this in the center um, to give it uh, a little bit more of a fill-in. Or... Um, you can play with a bunch of these little pink ones and add three or four of them into the center stitched in and it looks like that's the center of the flower. So very pretty in, in no time at all. But we're going to still do some other things. And then there was this one. Um, this one I did without any tool and um, the, the bottom layer is not sticking on so I will have to stitch that one as well. This one almost looks like an iris when, when you look at it. Yeah, iris? Iris, yeah. Um, no, not an iris, an orchid, right? Sort of like an orchid. Um, just because of how flat it is and how it I didn't over melt it. This one has the tool at the background, and it's in those same pinky and, and um, cream-colored uh, flowers. So you can see how having a variegated color or two-color flower or mixing it with other uh, petals uh, really makes the difference in how it looks in the end. So very pretty. Okay, and lots of pins here, and that's real, this is real scraps. And get these pins out of the way. And I have um, another one here that is done with more layers of tulle and uh, different flowers uh, that I've put together. So that one looks good. And I think, oh, I have one more here. Yeah, one more pink one there. So now comes the time to play and to show you different things that you can do with these things. So I have some doilies here. Now I'm not going to finish anything here on, uh, on camera, but I'm just going to give you some options and let you see how you can uh, play with these. So I can stitch a doily behind here. This one I actually did put one of those pink centers in there. So I could stitch a doily behind there. And I have a container here. Oh, I have another one here too. And more leaves. Okay, so I have another one here that doesn't have a center. This one's got more glue on it. And I'll show you that after. And I have a container here. This is all either broken jewelry or it's um, clip-on earrings. I use a lot of clip-ons. And I also use the little beaded clusters that I showed you how to make um, as well. So they, they all this is all stuff for making flowers. So I have this great big rhinestone uh, brooch here. It's missing something in the center. I will have to put a pearl in the center. But if I took that and added that into the center of there, like what a difference it makes already, right? And we haven't really done much to this flower. Um, I could take it and put it into the center of this one. And how pretty is that, right? It's just so effective, the coloring. I've got this big blobby <laughs> clip-on earring here that has a combination of this pearls and, uh, you know, in this yellowy color and then that darker coral. If I glued that down into the center, that in itself is just gorgeous. There's nothing else to do except stitch the flower together and glue this down. I do have to take the earring back off of here and all I do with that is just take my pliers that's one of these kind of backs and I just bend this back and forth until it breaks and yes it will break 
there we go so now the earring back is off of here this is one of those odd weird things those weird oddities that i told you about we're going to keep all this stuff now when i tell you to keep this stuff you gotta keep it and um so going back to this this flower if i put that in the center here how beautiful that is right now if you can imagine that on a book cover and you thought i didn't come prepared <laughs> have it on a book cover or um you know like i said you could you could make this into a millinery flower for um for a hat or for a corsage or whatever so all of this would get stitched right on or glued in um this particular piece has a lot of little holes in the back so i would use a needle and thread and stitch it on uh, if if that's what i was going to use but you know it's hard to make that decision it's hard to commit to something um you know i've done that before right <laughs> Where I tell you, it's not easy to commit until the last second. I've got this beautiful brooch here. It's missing a few stones. So I will have to go back and find something to glue in here. But it doesn't matter if it matches or not. Um, because it's it's just the the sparkliness that we're catching. And I seem to be gravitating back to this flower. But again, look how pretty that looks in the center. And, you know, it's the most beautiful flower. And these were just those nasty silk flowers. Not even silk, fake silk. What about this orange one? You know, we've got that big center in there. So maybe instead of putting another flower in there, if you put that in there, doesn't that look just beautiful? Still a little bit of glue, but I will show you how to cover the glue. And then, um, you know, we've got these little ones. Let's play with the little ones. Oh, I had started to show you with the doily here. So, so you can add a doily onto the back. You can add a bow on here. You can still add something. Well, that's maybe a little too large. Let's find something a little smaller here. Um, this is, yes, one of my toy boxes that I use. So you can add something like that in there and make an instant little um, decoration, embellishment to go on your journals. Um... I could go on and on with this, but I want to take another, uh, I've got this piece of lace sitting on the table and you will see this piece of lace came, um, it, it was part of my thrifty, um, video that you will see later in the week, but all of these pink flowers, if I glue those down onto here or stitch them, and there's a bunch of them, you can make this very pretty. Um, snippet or whatever you and then you can you can cut them down as you need to that might be a little bit big for a leaf move all this over so you see how I um I work in this mess until I come up with something that I like and all of these can be stitched on and just add some little pearls or beads and then used as you as you want it. I mean, this might not be the best piece of lace because it's kind of small, but it's easy to add this stuff on and and create little clusters that you can use in your journals. So even without all of these big leaves, if we just put those on there, that in itself is just so pretty. I've shown you other things like this where you add it onto lace. Now, I do have... Oh, here's some more beads. Because yeah, I had left them all up there. I do have some little ribbon roses that you can add into the centers. So you can use flowers in the, inside the flowers. Uh, and then these are little sequin pieces that I cut out of... Um, the tool so that can be added in there and and it just gives it a very vintage effect just like that and and you will see this this um these embellishments later on in the week as well um, i did pre-record a couple of videos so so they're in opposite orders but this is just part of a little bit of a tool with a little embellishment of sequins in it um, but it changes the look so quickly 
and really not expensive to do. It's just a matter of playing around and seeing what you have that you can add into it. And here's another one, so I can add that one in there. You can stitch some beads in there. You could stitch some sequins with beads. Um, you can use some little flat back gemstones, flat back roses, um, all kinds of goodies. Um, this little flower here, um, just a matter of adding in a couple of these sequins and it gives it a very vintage look. You can see that. And so it's, you know, antiqued and it's flat so it can be used inside your journals. Um, you can use it for other projects, not just for your journals. Uh, and it's just a matter of playing. I, I could go on and on with this uh, day in and day out to find you different things to put in the center of these flowers. Um, like this one might be probably a little bit nicer to add this into here. And that is just another earring that I would just take the back off of it to use. There was also this one, which is very pretty. Um, to add into the center of that and what a gorgeous little flower made from those nasties that's what I like about this stuff I also have these stick on flowers this green one if you add it into the center let's add it into this one like it's got a stick on I would probably take that off and just hot glue it in but it becomes the stamen in your flower you can see that and uh, so cute and and you can use uh, you know different colors add that into there and it's so this is where you might dig out some of those scrapbooking flowers that we bought years ago by the thousands because uh, they were so popular here's a little ribbon rose just putting that in the center and what a difference that makes so yes, that is my flowers. I'm going to do a follow-up on Friday where I have all of these finished. I will commit to something <laughs> as much as I don't want to, but I will commit to something because I will I will prepare them to use in, you know, where I match them up and uh, make everything the same so that I can use them together and stuff or separately. Um, but yeah, so that's just to give you ideas. Now, as far as the gluing uh, part of it, um, you can, you can use one of those doilies. I've got this style of doily here. I do sell some of these doilies in my coffee shop. But I've got this doily here and it's got a little bit of a hanger on it. So you can add that into the center. That takes away a lot of that glue. And then add something simple like a clip-on earring into the center or a bead cluster or um, you know just about anything that you have in your stash and and you can further embellish this even more uh, another thing that I want to show you if I can find them just give me one second one second I'll be right there okay maybe more than one second Okay, is your, and I don't use these very often because I forget about them all the time, is your stickle glue, uh, stickle glitters. So taking your brush or squeezing it out, you can, you can uh, brush the edges of a flower. I don't know how, um, what kind of shape this is in, but we'll try it. That's never going to open. It's never going to squeeze out of there. Kim, you haven't used these in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have them, I would just, uh, you know, put the glitter around the edges of your flower. I will do some of these before the week is up. It's it's just to show you on the fly. It doesn't always work because <laughs> this stuff is as much as it is still usable. I probably have to work at it in order to get it to come through the hole. Um, but you can use your stickles for things like this to enhance them further. And, um, you know, you can you can just put some glue on the edges and. Um, sprinkle some glitter on top. You can you can um, use your embossing powders by inking the edges of your flowers with your ink your ink pad your your uh, Versamark ink pad, and then uh, put your embossing powder and then heat it again carefully. 
um, but heat it again and, and you can emboss the edges of these as well. Um, your glimmer mists, your, your uh, glitter sprays, all of that can be added onto here to make it more sparkly or enhance the colors or take away from any of the glue that was showing through from the original flowers. I hope you can still see the glue. And if you can't see the glue, that's good. Um, so yeah, there's so many different options. You could put a layer of tool uh, on top of here. Like this one isn't glued down. So I could put a layer of glue on top, which again takes away a little bit from the glue marks that are there. Put some flowers, put, you know, other things in the center and um, you don't see it and just very delicate looking very very airy very pretty and will hold up really nicely when you are uh, making your projects because you know if you try to use the silk flowers the way they are first of all they look cheap and and we don't want that effect for our journals you spend so much time making a journal you don't want to mess it up by using cheap nasty flowers on it so so doing this uh, allows you to have uh, flowers that you really like in the colors you want to have um, and then uh, you know it just gives it a little bit more richness because you're using um, you know you, you're um, melting them up to to not make them look so so uh, silky. Um, another thing you can do I'm just using white tool but you can use colored tool um, to a uh, sparkly tool would be pretty if you did layers with sparkling tool that would be a lot of fun um, you can also buy the flowers in white or cream and uh, stain them with your inks and your sprays and all that stuff to achieve the color combination that you want so if you're doing a journal and you want to have flowers on the outside of it you can spray the flowers the ribbon you can dye them all together and and they will take all on the same color and then it's coordinating throughout your book you know if that's how you like to to decorate then that's a great way to do it so I hope you got enough out of this to start playing. Remember, um, when you're, you're playing with the heat gun, you have to be sure to, to test. Don't go full force because you're going to burn some flowers. I think there was one here um, that I burnt that I wanted to show you. Of course, now I won't find it. Um, but I did burn one of the leaves where it made a big hole in it. This one? No. No, I don't know where it went to. Um, but yeah, you just have to be careful not to burn them. Um, and you know, if you do, it's going to be just one of those things that you learn uh, the first couple of times that you're doing these. Um, but but eventually you'll get the hang of it. And then it's if you uh, just do it lightly and you decide you want to have more um, scrunching and more... Um, bubbles in the the uh, fabric then just go back and continue to work on it and and you will get to the hang of it and you will get used to doing it the main thing is to do it outside always be you know mindful that uh, you don't want to be smelling this so make sure you're in the right direction for the wind you know do the wet finger test um so so that you're not breathing this in because they are chemicals that you're you're playing with and uh, ne don't do this inside and certainly don't use fire or you know any kind of other method in your studio there are a lot of videos and this is i think a long time ago i said to you that this burns my creams my corn um because i see people taking flower petals and um singeing it with a candle and i just think one wrong move and you can make such a disaster um, and and take down your whole home and and yeah you you can laugh all you want when I say that but just remember many forests have been taken down by a matchstick a cigarette butt and a spark so so always be careful when you're doing that so anyway I'll leave with that oh wait one more thing I want to show you this was the fabric I was using to cut those little centers for the pink so there's the centers I just cut around it but this would also be pretty as a layer in your your flowers too to have that little bit of sparkly in there um, these flowers if you were to buy them you know they're anywhere from five to about fifteen dollars a set uh, so now you know how to make them okay that's it for today <laughs> uh, I wish you all a very creative day and a creative week Techniques Tuesday flowers is done now for a while because this is a two-parter so you're getting them both today 
Uh, starting next week, we're going into jewelry, and it's going to be a fun series of jewelry. I'm expecting that there'll be five to seven videos working on, you know, how to take apart jewelry, how to uh, decide how to use it, and we're going to make some dangles, some window dangles, uh, some some tassels for your jewel, your uh, journals, all kinds of fun things that you get to play with. So stay tuned for that. Uh, it's Tuesday, so uh, Wednesday is going to be my happy mail because I want to get all that out on Friday. Uh, Thursday is uh, Thrifty Canucks. That was pre-recorded. It, it's ready for, for Thursday. And then Friday will be my follow-up day with my digitals, and we will discuss arm's length art for Saturday. And yeah, that's a big lineup. See you all soon. Bye for now.